right, so this is a quick, well, might not be a quick video, but this is a video on how to do the Xbox um, game cards. Okay, so what I've done is I've opened up my Xbox practice file and it actually kind of zoomed in on the text here. So I'm going to go to my zoom tool and option click a couple of times here. So I have all my text over on the left all my card information on the page. My goal is to design these three gray cards to look more dynamic and interesting to the potential buyer. So what I'm gonna do first, in order to do this card correctly, I'm gonna take out my layers panel and pull the bottom right corner so I can read the names of my layers. And I'm also going to need my appearance panel. And I'm going to pull that one down like this. Okay, before I do anything else, I want to click on the stroke and hit this little triangle so I can close up that bar. Click on the fill, click the triangle, and close that bar. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do in order to design these cards is get these white icons out of the way. And they're on a layer right there. So I'll just turn off the eyeball get those out of the way okay our goal is to design these three cards but in order to do that I have a layer right down here and the name of this layer is wrong so I'm gonna double click the name of that layer and call that scribble backgrounds and I'll hit return to accept that now before I do any colors or scribble effects or any textures here, I need a copy of this layer. Okay, so I'm gonna take this bottom layer, which I've renamed Scribble Backgrounds, click the pop-up in the upper right of the Layers panel, and the third option down, Duplicate Scribble Backgrounds. Okay, the copy sits right on top of the original. I'm gonna double-click the name of that copied layer, and call that masks, plural, and I'll hit return. Now we're not gonna need the masks until the very end, so I'm just gonna move that layer up all the way to the top. I can see a thick blue bar right there. We'll put the masks at the top, and most importantly, I'm gonna turn off the eyeball for that layer. I'm gonna use it at the end when I need it. Okay, might as well move the white icons as well. Up, underneath the masks, because those are the two layers that I have turned off. And if I were you practicing this, I would go ahead and go to File, Save As, and Save Your Progress. Okay, I'm not going to do that here on a demo, but I'm going to continue from here. So, I have my top two layers turned off. I have my scribble backgrounds. Okay, the original game cards for Xbox are just a flat green card. They're really boring. And my goal is to show you all the functions of Illustrator to make these cards a lot more exciting to the viewer. Okay, so what I'm going to do is click on this first card. And right here on my appearance panel is the fill. Okay, I want anything but gray. So I'm just going to jump over to my swatches and... I want to do this as kind of fiery colors. So I'm going to start here with kind of a reddish orange down there. Okay, and the way Illustrator works is you get one fill per object according to your toolbox. But I want this to be a multicolored object, not just one color. The Xbox cards are already one color. They're green and they're boring. So I want to do some fiery colors, oranges and lighter oranges and yellows and golds. So I'm going to start with a darker color. Right here on my appearance panel is that darker fill. I go to the upper right corner of the appearance panel, my pop-up menu, and I add a new fill. Okay, I'll click right here so I'm on the top fill, and I'll make that color a little brighter. I'm going to click up here in the pop-up, and I'll add another new fill, a third fill. And I'll make that even brighter. And then I'll add one more fill. I'm on the top 
fill bar right here. Click the pop up, add another new fill. And if I don't like any of the colors on my swatches, I can come up to my color panel and pick my own kind of golden color here. If I can get a decent gold right in about let's see there. Okay, that looks good. So now I've got a rectangle that has four colors. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing for each one of these rectangles. I'll click the middle one. Instead of gray, I'm gonna start with, let's say, um, let's go with a dark blue. I'll click the pop-up on the appearance panel, add another new fill, and I'll go lighter blue. Add another new fill. We'll go lighter blue, add another new fill, and I'll come up here and just keep that card all light shades of blue. Okay, and as an experiment, I'm gonna click on this third card. Instead of starting with gray, I'm gonna start with magenta over here. And then to totally experiment, I'm gonna add another brand new fill, and maybe I'll pick a green. Click the pop-up for another new fill, and maybe I'll try an orange, and I'll click the pop-up for another final fourth fill, and maybe I'll click red, just totally random color choices. Okay, again, once you have added your four colors to each card, save your progress. Now the problem is, when I click on card number one, the only color I'm gonna see is the color on the top. It's like a deck of cards. This color covers this one, and it covers this one, and it covers this one. Okay, so the main goal is you select a game card, start at the top. That color is covering every other color. So what I wanna do is make a visual kind of texture to this, not just a flat color. And I can do that right up here. Effect menu, come down to stylize and scribble. As soon as I get this box, I'm gonna move it out of the way and turn on my preview. Okay, right up here, you've got a bunch of settings. You have childlike, which really tears up the card. You have dense, which really just slightly affects the outer edges. You have loose, which is kind of like the childlike, but a little more evenly spaced. You have moiré patterns, which is kind of like a double vision effect. You have sharp, which is kind of useless. You just barely notice it on the edges. You got sketch, which is pretty evenly distributed with a thicker line. Snarl. It's like a big ball of hair. You also have swash, which is kind of like a fabric weave that goes back and forth and back and forth. You have a tight, which again, just affects the outer edges. It's really subtle. And one of my favorites is zigzag, just one long continuing zigzagging line. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make sure that my zigzag goes all the way past the edges. And in order to do that, I'm going to zoom in first. So I'm going to click cancel. Again, when you select your card, make sure you click over here. You're on this color only. You don't want to come up here because that's going to affect every color. You want to be on the top color only. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit right there so we can see that. Again, it is effect stylize, scribble. I move this out of the way and I turn on my preview right there. And what I'm gonna do is start with, let's go with sketch. Okay, you can see how it just barely bumps out of the edges, barely bumps out here. So in order to truly make sure that this sketch effect covers the entire card, I'm gonna set my path overlap to the right to about 0.25, a quarter of an inch. I wanna make sure I get a full bleed. Okay, down here you have a stroke width. These lines are really thick. So instead of 0.07, I'm gonna barely drag this to the left and make it 
maybe 0.03, really thin line. That way, when I get more breaks in these lines, I can see that next color. I'm seeing the next color peeking through. I don't like this little gap right here. So I also have a curviness slider and a spacing slider. So I'm going to drag curviness to the right. And as I drag it more and more and more, you can see how those lines start to crisscross, creating these little diamond type of shapes. But I don't want that because it's starting to look like another scribble effect that I'm going to use later. So we're going to bring this back, keep the lines more straight. But again, I don't like this coming off the opening. So right up here is an angle field. I can just dial this up to maybe 45 degrees. And you can see how that totally changed the look. And I kind of like that. But I want to experiment with different angles and I know this yellow is going to be my top color so I might set my angle up to about 90 degrees so I get it going straight up and down that looks pretty good the spacing is all right I'm not going to really deal with that I can see some gaps in here and that's pretty good so I'll click OK okay what you have to do then really important with your card still selected you click on the right for the next color going down and you repeat those steps again. Effect menu, stylize, scribble. This is going to remember the exact last setting you use. So now I'm going to change my angle to about 45 degrees. So I get them to crisscross here. And I'm not going to change anything else. I just want them to crisscross. I'll click OK. Click the third color down and do it again. Effect, stylize, scribble. And maybe I'll change the angle crisscrossing like an X pattern like that. I like that. I'm getting all my bleed. I click OK. And then I come down to the final or bottom color. Effect menu, stylize, scribble. And I'm going to change the angle to kind of a sideways angle, like a crisscross. It's almost like a canvas or a burlap kind of print. If I don't like the amount of whites in here, I can take the spacing, just push it a little bit to the left. So I kind of space those lines a little closer to each other. And I kind of like that. So I'll click OK. There is texture number one. Okay, what I would recommend is every time you finish a texture, save your progress because this is a visual effect. If I went to view menu and outline, none of those crisscrossing lines are truly there. It's just a visual trick. And those visual effects, they take a lot of memory to render on your screen. So save your work frequently. I'll come back up to view and preview. And now that I know the sketch effect or sketch scribble works, I'm going to hold my space bar, come over to the blue one, click, start on the color on the top, and I'll do it again. Effect menu, stylize, scribble. I'll click the settings up here, and I might try snarl. So I get this really wavy line. Totally different from the first one. I'm going to set my path overlap again to about a quarter of an inch or so. And I like that. I don't, I don't really want to change anything else. That's good enough for me. I click OK. Click on the second color coming down always. Effect, stylize, scribble. And I kind of like how that just slightly offsets from the first one. Kind of like this watery kind of look. And I'm going to keep that. I like that effect. I'm seeing these two colors. I'll click OK. Always click the color you want to change first. Then I go to Effect, Stylize, and Scribble. And I might change the angle completely on that one. There we go. So it breaks up some of that dark blue back there. I'll click OK. And then the final bottom color, Effect stylize, scribble, and maybe change the angle going that way a little bit. And that's a good texture. Completely different from the first texture. So I like that. Again, save your progress on this. 
and then I'll come to the final one. You can see my screen is already kind of popping around here because it's already slowing down. So again, save your work frequently. I'm going to click and drag over this third one, start at the top. And since I experimented with random colors, I'm going to experiment with random scribble effects as well. Effect, stylize, scribble. And I'm going to come up here and set this one to, uh, let's say, a swash pattern right there. Okay, I'm going to set my path overlap up to about a quarter of an inch. And I want these lines to just barely show up because they're really dark. So I'm going to set the stroke width down to about 0.01. Just barely show those. Maybe add a little more spacing on those lines too. So I push them apart just a little bit more like, eh, kind of like that. Okay, that's pretty good. I'll click OK. Come down to the orange color that's now peeking through the red. Effect, stylize, scribble. And now I'm going to change that to a zigzag. And I want that zigzag to have a quarter of an inch or so overlap. That looks good enough. I'll just keep it on the default. I like that. Click on the third color. That's the green peeking through. Effect, stylize, scribble. And maybe we'll set the green to um, a snarl, kind of like what I did over here. Get some wavy lines going. Set my path overlap. There we go, getting this really colorful texture down here. And then the final color. Effect, stylize, scribble. And let's set that to a sketch. Get more of just a zigzagging line here. Set my path overlap here, at least a quarter of an inch. And that's gonna be good for what I want. So I'll click OK. Okay, at any time, if you zoom out, I'll option click there, I've got three distinctly looking textures, but now I don't like this one. Or let's say I don't like this one. Okay, here's the warning. You cannot click on an object, click on a color, and then go right back to effect and stylize and scribble. That's not how it works. Because what that's trying to do is tell Illustrator to scribble your scribble. It, it can't do that, it'll just freeze up. Okay, so what I would recommend, if you ever wanna make changes, click on the color, well obviously click the box first, click the box, click on the color, and then open this triangle right here. This is how you get back to your scribble effect. You have to do it from the appearance panel. So I'm going to click that little scribble link. Takes me right back to my settings for that color. And maybe I'll adjust the spacing a little bit more to push those yellow lines apart. Then I click OK. I can close up this little triangle. I don't like how these two are looking very similar to each other. So I'm going to click on this one over here. And maybe rearrange the colors. Kind of like layers. I can pull the green up to the top. There we go. And now I'm getting a different mix. So I have a kind of a fiery color card, a blue card, and a green card. You can always mix them up. Okay. Again, once I've got these textures, save your progress. So I'm going to save this right here. Save as. I am always going to name my files with my last name then my first name, and I will call this Xbox Cards. There we go. I'm going to save it in the Xbox Scribble Cards folder. And I'm working in Illustrator 2020, so I'll click OK. OK, so now I have my three textures. To be safe, I'm going to lock that layer. I don't want to accidentally bump it or delete it. And now my goal is to add three photos. So I don't need this appearance panel anymore. 
I can close that off my screen. I am going to make a different layer for each photo. Okay, so I'm going to come right down here. I start on the bottom layer, click the sheet of paper, double click, and I will call that photo one, whoops, one, and hit return. And then I'm going to drag in a photo for this card. Okay, so I'll go to File Menu, Place. Only this time I'm not going to trace. Okay, so here's my Xbox Scribble Cards folder. I got sample photos here. So for my three video games, I picked Mortal Kombat, God of War, and Overwatch. So I'll pick uh, Scorpion. He's got a lot of gold, which is going to kind of go with this card. Once I click place, I want to start above the photo or above the card. Click and drag at an angle so your photo is bigger than the card, like that. You want to make sure your photo is big enough to completely fill the card. I'm going to take my black arrow, move the photo over in the general area where that card was, and then I'm going to come over to my transparency panel. Okay, I've got a setting of 100%. That is a solid photo that covers up the card. So I'll click this little pop-up and slide the opacity back until I get a nice little balance of photo and texture. And we'll keep him right about in that area right there. Okay, I have to keep in mind there's going to be a hole in the card right here. So I don't want to put his head right in the middle. And in fact, I want his head to be bigger. So I'm going to take my free transform. I can click right up here, which allows me to not distort my photos. Let's drag that corner way up. Then I'll pull his face back down into the card. And I want him right about there for right now. Okay, I'm going to click outside with my black arrow. You'll notice how half of this photo has now covered up the second card. So that's why you want to keep different layers. I'm going to turn that layer off, turn the eyeball off. I'll make another brand new layer, double click, and that will be photo two. And I'm going to repeat those steps again. File and place. I'll pick my second photo here. No check marks down below, as I always say. Click place, and I'll start above the card. Click and drag at an angle, because it comes in in the proportion of the photo. Go pretty big like that. Drag this one over. Go to my transparency panel, and I'm going to lower the transparency on that one as well. Okay, I kind of like him right about in here. Kind of the head in the upper left, kind of like what I did with Scorpion from Mortal Kombat. We'll go right there. Click outside, and that photo is so big, it's covered the first, the second, and the third card. So again, turn off the eyeball to get that second photo out of the way. And I add another layer for the third photo. I'll double click and call that photo three. Repeat those steps again file in place. I'll pick my third photo of Mercy. Start above the card. Click and drag down at an angle so the photo is bigger than the card. I'll move this over. And since that's more of a close-up of that character, I'll keep her right there for now. Go to my transparency and lower the transparency here. Right about in there click outside and maybe I'll just move her down a little bit more and over to the right. Okay, we'll have her coming in from the right side of the card right there. Okay, so we have Mercy coming in from the right. Then I will have God of War. I want to move him, so let's move him into the center of the card. He's the center card, so we'll put his head kind of in the center right there. And then the Mortal Kombat, the card on the left, he'll come in from the left. Okay? So now I have my three photos in place. I'm going to Command-S, 
save my progress again. And now I need to clean up this mess. I got scribble effects going all over the place. I've got photos covering everything. Now I'm gonna clean up the backgrounds of my cards. So I'm gonna do them one card at a time. Okay, right up here, I'm gonna turn on my mask layer. And I'm gonna turn on the layer for photo one. Okay, all you have to do is take your black arrow, start right above the page, right up here, click and drag down through everything on the first card. And this little gray box, these masks, are going to turn into containers. So all the junk outside of this gray box is about to disappear by going to Object Menu, Clipping Mask, Make. There's card number one. But notice, yikes, I still have a mess all the way around the card. And that's because I forgot to unlock this layer. So I'll just go to edit, undo. And if you're going to do a clipping mask, unlock your layers. Okay, I just have to repeat this. Click and drag down through the first card. Object menu, clipping mask, make. There's card number one. Now I turn on the layer for photo two, and I repeat that step again. Click and drag down through the second card. Object menu, clipping mask, make. There's card number two. Turn on the layer for photo three. Let's move this over, and I'll do it again. Start above the page. Click and drag down through the page, object menu, clipping mask, make. So there's the backgrounds of my three cards. Okay, but now that I look at this, I like the card on the right. I like what's going on in the middle, but I don't like his head. His head is too small. I need to blow up that photo, but I've already put it in a clipping mask. And that's not going to be a problem. Okay, the other thing you need to keep in mind is when you make masks, everything gets sucked up to the top layer. Okay, this top layer is going to cover up my icons, going to cover up my text. And these layers now, if they don't have a little white triangle, that means these layers are empty because they've all gotten sucked up to that top layer. So if these areas right here are blank, I can click here, shift click, shift click shift click and shift click actually I don't want to shift click logos because I'm going to add those later click shift click shift click shift click and I'll just drag them to the trash your masks when you're done go to the bottom that way your white icons will show up later your type will show up on top of the masks your logos will be on top of the masks so that's the order you want right there. But again, I don't like this guy's head. So if I go to the masks layer, I can click this triangle and open up the layer like a folder. And I have my three individual cards. If you're not sure which one is which, turn off the eyeball. Okay, so if I go to this one and turn off the eyeball, that's the card I want to deal with. I open up this triangle and it says this card is made up of the container, the image, and the scribble effect. So I'm going to click right here on the image. And all the way to the right is a button called the target. When I click that, you can see that it has now reselected my photo. So if I hit Command and Minus, I'm going to zoom way out, go to my free transform tool, I'm going to turn on this top button so I don't distort my photo. And I'll just hold or just drag. I don't even need to hold the shift key because I just clicked that. I'll click and drag way out here and then pull him back in. His head's almost the size of this guy. I'm going to pull this corner out a little more and drag him back in. And that's going to look good right in there. 
Okay, so again, I have a guy coming in from the left, a guy who's centered, character coming in from the right. Now that that layer is done, I close up that triangle, close up that triangle, and click outside with my black arrow. These are my cards. Now again, I'm going to be putting type on top of these cards. So if they're a little too dark still, I can select all three, go to my transparency, and now lower the transparency of all three of those like that. Just knock it down a little bit more so they're easier to read. Okay, I don't want to accidentally bump these, so I will lock my masks layer. And then I'm going to take a look at all the finishing details in another video in just a second.